Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the pressure volume loop. I'm going to be explaining what each of these points mean and then I'm going to move on to some pathologies such as aortic regurgitation, mitral regurgitation and mitral stenosis. So the x-axis of the pressure volume loop is referring to the left ventricular volume whereas the y-axis is referring to the left ventricular pressure. If we look at this line here, this is when the left ventricular volume is increasing. And this is the point at which the left ventricle is filling with blood. So starting off over here, at this point, the AV valve, which is the mitral valve in this case, because we are looking at the left ventricle, the mitral valve is going to open because the left atrium pressure is going to be higher than the pressure in the left ventricle, which is going to result in the opening of the AV valve. So blood from the atrium is going to move into the ventricle, which is going to result in an increase in the left ventricular volume. And at this point here, the pressure in the ventricle would be higher than the pressure in the atrium, which results in the closure of the AV valve. This point here, this volume is referred to the end systolic volume, which is the volume of the left ventricle after the ventricle would have contracted. So after most of the blood in the left ventricle went into the aorta and at this point here this is referred to as the end diastolic volume because it's the volume at which the ventricle is filled with blood after ventricular filling occurs. Right over here we can see that the pressure in the left ventricle is increasing while the volume is remaining the same and this point is referred to as the isovolumetric contraction. We can see that the AV valves closed over here just because the pressure in the ventricle became higher than the pressure in the atrium which causes the valve to close but the aorta still isn't open because the aortic pressure is still higher than the ventricular pressure so at this point the ventricle is just contracting but the blood is still remaining in the ventricle which is why the left ventricular volume does not change at this point here this is when the pressure in the ventricle would become higher than the pressure in the aorta which causes the aortic valve to open and this is when the left ventricular volume is going to decrease just because the aorta is open. So now blood goes from the ventricle into the aorta to go all around the body. At this point here, the aorta is going to close because the aortic pressure becomes higher than the pressure in the ventricle. So the aorta closes. And at this point here, this is referred to as isovolumetric relaxation. The volume is remaining the same, just like over here, but the pressure is decreasing now. And this is because the aorta is closed and the AV valve still isn't open. So none of the valves are open, so the ventricle is just relaxing, but the blood in the ventricle is not going anywhere and no blood is entering the ventricle. This over here is referred to as the stroke volume. The stroke volume is the difference between the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume and it's basically how much blood is pumped out of the heart. Moving on to the pathologies, we're first going to start off talking about aortic regurgitation. So over here is what the pressure volume loop is going to look like in aortic regurgitation. I wrote down some points here and I'm going to explain them one by one to show you what happens exactly in aortic regurgitation. So just to explain what it is exactly, it's basically when the aortic valve is not able to close completely, which is why you get blood, you get backflow of blood from the aorta into the left ventricle, which is not supposed to happen. The first point, you have no true isovolumetric relaxation. So as we said, this is isovolumetric relaxation right over here. And as you can see in aortic regurgitation, there isn't a true isovolumetric contraction. The volume is actually changing. And this is just because the aortic valve is not able to close completely. So when it's supposed to be closed, there's still blood going from the aorta to the left ventricle, which is why the left ventricular volume is increasing slightly at this point. The second point is an increased end diastolic volume. So end diastolic volume would be here. And in aortic regurgitation, it is increased. 
And this is just because typically you get blood going into the ventricle from the atrium. That's the only way blood can enter the ventricle. But in aortic regurgitation, you're always you're getting some blood from the a aorta going into the ventricle as well. So you're going to have two sources of blood, which means that you're going to have an increased end diastolic volume. You're also going to get an increased contractile force, an increased stroke volume, and an increased ventricular peak systolic pressure. And basically, all of these are a result of the frank stalling mechanism. When you get an increase in the end diastolic volume like you're getting here, this is also going to result in an increased contractile force, an increased stroke volume, and an increased ventricular peak systolic pressure. So the peak systolic pressure would be here, which is higher. And the stroke volume would be this, which is larger than this. So moving on to mitral regurgitation, this is the pressure volume loop in mitral regurgitation. So this is the normal, and this is what happens in mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation is basically when the mitral valve is not able to close completely. So you're going to get leakage of blood from the ventricle to the atrium. So the first point is that there is no true isovolumetric relaxation, just like in aortic regurgitation. In this case, the left ventricular volume is going to decrease as opposed to staying the same and as opposed to increasing in aortic regurgitation. And this is just because when the ventricle is meant to be relaxing and the aortic valve is closed, the mitral valve is not completely closed. So at this point, blood is still going to be going from the ventricle to the atrium, which is going to result in a decrease in the left ventricular volume. The next point is an increased stroke volume. So in mitral regurgitation, just because when the ventricle is contracting, blood is going to be going, apart from going out of the aorta, it's also going to be going back into the atrium. And this is going to result in a higher pressure and a higher volume in the left atrium. And this higher volume and higher pressure is going to result in an increase in the end diastolic volume and end diastolic pressure because more blood is going to be pumped into the ventricle. And by Frank Stalling's mechanism, this increase in end diastolic volume and end diastolic pressure is going to result in an increased stroke volume. However, the ejection into the aorta is decreased. And at first, this can look a bit contradictory just because the stroke volume is increased. But the stroke volume in this this case is referring to the amount of blood that's being pumped from the ventricle. So it's including both the blood that's pumped out of the aorta and also the blood that's being pumped into the atrium. So because some blood is going to be pumped into the atrium, you're going to have less blood going into the aorta. Lastly, mitral stenosis. So this is what the pressure volume loop is going to look like in mitral stenosis when compared to the normal. Mitral stenosis is basically when you have a narrowing of the mitral valve. So if this is the normal mitral valve, it allows a lot of blood to be pumped from the atrium to the ventricle. But in this case, the mitral valve is narrowed. It's not able to open up completely. So less blood is going to be able to pass from the atrium to the ventricle. So as a result of this, you're going to get an decreased end diastolic volume because less blood is going to be able to go into the left ventricle. So this would be the end diastolic volume as compared to this. And you also get a decreased stroke volume just because, again, by Frank Stalling's mechanism, when you have a decreased end diastolic volume, you're also going to get a decreased stroke volume, which is shown by this being narrower than this. So thank you very much. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any recommendations of what you would like me to film next, please do let me know. And if you have any recommendations of how I can make these videos more helpful, then also please let me know. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll speak to you soon.